Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. So we're back. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. So Power Girl and her bosom. Recently at the time of this recording, I did a video about her bust and why it got so big. And some comments felt that that was an urban legend, a myth. Some even went so far as to say that it had been debunked. I disagree. I think it's actually a lot deeper than that. I obviously find this fascinating because I'm back. I read the comments. I know they say you're not supposed to, but I do. I enjoy them. However, some were phrased like challenges, and I cannot refuse a challenge. I will die on any hill if I feel like it. If it's a nice hill, it's got some flowers on it, a nice shady spot. So I say challenge accepted. You dare challenge me. So how exactly are we gonna do this? Are we gonna get a ruler out? <laughs> no, it's not gonna be exactly like that. Tempting though. Now first up, we're gonna go back to the first appearance, then we're gonna go a couple of issues up because they said it took a couple of issues. The six, the seven, the eight. That amount of issues is roughly the time they say it took for the increase in size to be noticed by DC editorial staff and for them to tell Wally Wood to stop it. Also, yes, if you missed that last video, check it out because we're not gonna go over it again. This is just pure follow-up. We're gonna look at that and then even more reactions from the time and postulate how that could have impacted future art portrayals, along with artistic and stylistic shifts, and also the beauty that is human perception, meaning different people interpreting the same subject or image different ways. We're gonna have to get up close and personal with these bosom shots, and it's a sacrifice that I am willing to make. That was a Shrek joke. Okay, so first appearance, go! All-Star Comics number 58. Power Girl actually appears very briefly in this issue and close to the end. The breasts are noticeable, and slightly bigger than average, highlighted by the cut and shape of the costume. Okay, we all saw them. They were there. Lovely. Mwah. All right, well, let's now go to issue 65, seven issues up. You'll remember in that Jimmy Palmiotti quote from the last video, he said it took seven or eight issues. So let's go take a look. By issue 65, Power Girl is a more established member of the team. She appears more often. So to me, the bosom appears slightly more prominent. Not a lot, but a little. But you may be noticing something else. The, the window. Where is it? How will we look outside? So the window, or even the cut of the costume, was an issue this early on. In fact, the first time it was covered was actually in issue 64. This was because, according to Power Girl creator Jerry Conway, DC publisher Jeanette Kahn felt it was sexist. Which prompted Conway to state, the true dumb reason for the circle? At the time, it was a convention for hero costumes to have a chest symbol. I thought a giant P looked silly. The circle was intended as a nod to convention without being conventional. Not a sexy thing at all until Wally Wood's inks. So again, here we have the artist, Wally Wood, being credited as the person who drew attention to Power Girl's chest, highlighting and accentuating the bosom and cleavage area. Wally Wood was an artist who would eventually grow to have a bit of a mythology around him. This was in terms of his personality, not necessarily in terms of things that he actually did, because we can see those. We have the Gentleman's Magazines, we have the Disneyland Memorial Orgy, we have Power Girl, those are physical in front of things. So his willingness to depict sexuality was well known and in evidence. So the impact he made on Power Girl's physique cannot be understated. Because he draws it in the way he does and because it elicits such a quick and strong reaction, it becomes part of her character. The two things will become tied together. But if there is an increase happening, which in my opinion there is, it's subtle. And after chastisement had to be dialed back, which again lines up with the quote that once it was noticed, it stopped. In fact, after the whole, the hole must close incident, well at that point Wally Wood is gone by issue 66. Is that a coincidence? Is it because the book was going to be cancelled soon during the DC implosion? Well that fact seems to have been lost to time, but it is quite the coincidence. And then it's stabilized for a time. But the mentality that Power Girl had big breasts and that it mattered had been firmly established. The chest was now a battlefield, be it the size or the costume. This became something behind the scenes. It's a different thing in front of it, it's a separate thing behind it. A big part of why this is thought to be an urban legend these days is in my opinion because of what people are expecting and because of the fact that they're looking at it retroactively with how Power Girl looks now. So I think that people are looking for a huge increase, like from an A to an F, like a Kira 
nightly to a Jane Mansfield. Especially again now that we have those modern depictions, which are definitely larger than she was back in the day. While they would remain pretty stable throughout the rest of the 70s and the 80s, Justice League Europe is where people note the next big sizable increase. It's also the return of the proper cutout, which up until that point had been vacillating. It was a low cut, sometimes separated by her tassely things, sometimes it kind of existed, sometimes it didn't. Again, it was it was a big deal. Then we had a diamond. Why did I do it like that when I could have done it like this? So what happened here? Well, that series was famous for characters getting revamped, especially in the costume area. This new look would place even more emphasis on her bosom. But why the increases? Because these look bigger than the classic ones from back in the day. Classy comics. <laughs> Again, fun. These discussions can be fun. It's okay. It's okay. There are numerous possibilities. One is changing art styles, which can impact how a character looks and the way that they can be depicted. Two, a decrease in censorship power, slash the hold of the Comics Code Authority, which changed a lot of things in some subtle ways. It held on in some corners longer than others. Also, just general overall societal ideas about propriety and prudishness. Like, it changes, and those things end up impacting impacting how characters are depicted. There's a relationship. Another reason potentially is everyone's individualized perceptions of big. So when an artist or a person looks at Power Girl, they see different things, literally. One person's big is another person's average. And when they start drawing, that can end up manifesting. Also, if someone enters into a project or a work with the idea in their head that they're big, the drawing will then also reflect that because if they're big, they're supposed to be big, so you gotta draw them that way. And then if you look at a picture and you're like, oh, that isn't that big, I guess I'll bigify it some more, then, you know, things can get bigger, bigger, bigger. And there are some people who do it to be provocative or because they like it or because they think it's funny or because they're actually taking a stand. Everybody's very different. They have different rationales for why they do things. And at this point, it's become a part of her character. To depict them as smaller would also cause scrutiny and huge discussion. Just look what happens whenever they close the hole. Amanda Connor, who would draw Power Girl during JSA Classified in 2005 and later draw the 2009 series, would be asked about her feelings on the bosom. Because again, it's a topic of discussion. Because I know some of the comments were like, who cares? This doesn't matter. To some people it does, and to some people it's a huge topic to be brought up. Just because something isn't a big consideration for certain fans doesn't mean that it isn't for others, because there are different ways to approach things and people enjoy things in different ways and so it can bring focuses to different areas. And there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Again, I think it's really fascinating. You get a bunch of different discussions that way. When it can get a bit testy is when anyone goes, there's only one way and this is the way. This is the way. Few people respond well to being told this is the way. So what was Connor asked? There's been a lot of controversy in the last few years over whether female superheroes are overly sexualized in comic books. What's your take on that? Reply. I try to ignore the controversy and just give each character a lot of individuality. For instance, there's a lot of controversy about Power Girl's boobs. Frankly, her big boobs are part of her whole persona. People asked me, why didn't you give her smaller boobs? I said, then it's gonna become all about the boobs. We wanted to acknowledge that she looks the way she looks and move on to the story. She just happens to be a character that has gigantic boobs. I wouldn't draw Supergirl the same way because in my head, she's a teenage girl and she's not done growing yet. I try and give each individual character their own body type. I'd like to think I do it with male characters too. For instance, I would draw Nightwing leaner and more wiry than Batman or Superman. So again, how each artist decides to highlight the bosom varies. But at this point, that's what it is. It's a decision. Like you need to think about it. People are going to ask you questions because it has become this big deal. I feel like there's so many big puns or jokes that could be made in this video and I'm not doing it intentionally. Some actually managed to walk that fine line of conveying them very largely but not over sexualizing them and some sexualize them and feel that that's okay and there are different viewpoints and outlooks. But for all of this, wherever you land on this issue, Wally Wood was the catalyst. His early design proved provocative, evoking a reaction in the upper management level of DC, despite him thinking that it probably wasn't going to. Without Wally Wood drawing Power Girl in that way, at that time, with that reputation, with all of that creative staff in place, we would probably not have the Power Girl we have today. Without him, there is a definite question mark next to whether her chest would have ballooned and the fascination about her chest and costume, would they be so fervent? And so in that sense, no, I do not feel that the Wally Wood Power Girl breast size connection is a myth. Some of the details may have been lost to time 
embellished, but in my opinion, that's very different than a myth, which to me is something more like, there's a guy with a hook in the backseat of your car. If you look in a mirror three times and say, to me, that's an urban legend or myth. But him drawing big breasts in a provocative costume and getting told to chill, that happened. So the impact of this man and him starting it, that was real. There would be nothing to make bigger or exaggerate if he hadn't done that. Honestly, even the hole could have been more tasteful. It could have been higher up. It could have been up here. It didn't have to be down there. So in my personal opinion, calling it a myth or an urban legend is a bit harsh, but that's just my opinion. All of this may have made you feel that the connection was more tenuous than ever, or you may have a specific artist who you feel like, no, this is the person. This is the person who started it. I feel like it was indeed a chain of events that has evolved over time, but that it can be traced back to that moment. Again, some of you may be listening to this and be like, you're describing a myth? what's wrong with you. And of course there are some of you who I know are like, I don't care. Why are we still talking about this? Please stop. This is a disturbing amount of tension being placed upon a fictional character's chest. Listen, you have your fun, let me have mine. <laughs> so tell me what you think in those comments down below. I really do love reading them. No matter how some of them get, I'm down there. For me, fandom is all about seeing what different people think and all the different angles that they're coming from. Everybody's starting somewhere and everybody has a different thing that they like or don't like or what's drawing them to something or repelling them from something. I mean, it was comments that spurred this video. So I mean, if you like videos like this, please keep on commenting and just tell me what you think. Or if you hated this, then I guess stop. <laughs> I probably enjoyed this way too much. I'm Sasha and thanks so much for watching Casually Comics. Please do all the YouTube things, like, share, type those comments, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. And we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.